Let's move straight into the squadron summaries for the 17th of July, and 441 records that two uneventful frontline patrols were completed in the early afternoon. Later on a similar patrol carried out by six aircraft, six Falkwolf 190s were attacked. Two were destroyed by Flight Lieutenant Brown and one destroyed by Flying Officer Kimball. Late in the evening, an armed reconnaissance and dive bombing was carried out, and the bomb scored near misses on a bridge, and one MET smoker was claimed. And we'll have a look at one bridge target at least. It doesn't really tell us here what bridge was bombed by this squadron, but I do have another one bombed by another squadron on this day pinpointed. And 442 records that there was heavy mist this morning and no flying. Flying Officer Campbell flew back this afternoon after MT, or vehicles, had failed to get through to him, restricted road travel, and this was the divert aircraft to B-5 that we looked at yesterday. At 1300 hours, the sky cleared, quite hot, on 30 minute readiness until 1600 hours, then on 15 minutes until 1700, then 12 on an armed recce. Scored hits on about a dozen trucks, up again at 2045 on another armed recce, three flamers and four damaged, Several new kites flown in today by Pilot Officer Burns and Flying Officer Wilson. For those not on duty tonight, the RAF Gang Show put on a splendid two-hour variety show, all male cast in the open air. They were bothered a bit by Spitz Overhead, their first outdoor show in France, and this would have been sort of like a USO show, thinking about it from the US point of view. A lot of these names were, at the time, pretty well known, but speaking from experience here, any diversion at all for these guys from the grind of go to work, Grab some chow, work some more, find your bunk, and do it all again the next day would have been extremely welcome. So with that, we'll move on to 443. Now, 17 July, weather cloudy with heavy ground mist clearing in the later morning. Hazy and warm during the remainder of the day, medium wind. The CO gathered all squadron pilots together at Intelligence for a bowl session at 1100 hours. The purpose of discussion was to determine why this squadron was not destroying enemy aircraft at the same rate or more than other Spitfire squadrons. Defensive readiness in 127 wing taken by 443 squadron today, and beach patrols were flown hourly by four aircraft during the afternoon and evening. Pilot Officer Kearns crash-landed at T2 airfield northwest of Bayo when his engine cut at 3,500 feet on the first patrol over the area. A visit was made to the wing by Wing Commander Paul from Operations Record 7 Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Air Forces to discuss the weekly change in aircraft strength return. This should have been rendered from the 1st of June by squadrons, but no instructions were received until three days, and I take that to mean until three days ago. So we'll dig into the missions for today, and I'll start with the patrols carried out by a 443 squadron, and these run from 1225 to 2245. And things to note here in the description, we have the 1235 to 1340 patrol produced the only incident where Pilot Officer Kern's engine cut out northwest of Bayo, forcing him to make a belly landing on T2 airfield. Now when it refers to T2 right there, that's actually not an airfield number that shows up in any of the records that I have. Everything is expressed in either A or B. The T2 could just be mistranscription of B2. That's probably the most likely explanation. The other possibilities would have been B8, just to the northeast, B11 up on the coast, or AOG B1. And this is actually the other one that makes a lot of sense because it describes the airfield as T2, which isn't really a number that matches any of the systems we've been following. But B-1 is just a small airstrip for transport aircraft. It's right there just inland of the Mulberry Harbor at Aramanch. And if there were an airfield that would be called T-2, it would probably be this one, with T-1 being the equivalent airfield to the west in the American sector. But yeah, again, the most likely candidate is that it was just a mistranscription of B-2. Now, it also notes that on the same patrol, two enemy aircraft were seen and chased east, but our pilots were unable to close the distance for combat and that they encountered accurate, intense, heavy, and light flak up to 10,000 feet to the east of the Con cherbourg Road, and that was reported on the 1531-1651 to patrol. Haze and cloud up to 7 tenths were reported on the first patrol, but weather cleared to Cavu were ceiling and visibility unlimited on later missions. That's a rare thing to see. I can only think of maybe three or four other days where that's been the case, and the last down for these patrols was 2245. Overall, fairly uneventful. Now, at that exact same time, 441 was also on patrol duty, sending up patrols in sixes, which I thought was kind of interesting, remembering that 441 is the squadron that goes to the oddball wing, the RAF wing. So this could be a case where the doctrine used by this wing is a little different. The 
Johnny Johnson way of doing things with flights of four going up and finger four possibly not being preferred in this wing. But uneventful frontline patrols for the most part until we get to 1625 to 1710. Six Falkwolf 190s were attacked and Flight Lieutenant Brown destroyed two and Flying Officer Kimball destroyed one. And that was in fact the last patrol down at 1710. As their last patrol is landing, we have 442 up, 1650 to 1805 on an armed reconnaissance, and some scattered MET scene, one flamer, four damage claimed, weather fair, and then 441 squadrons back up on an armed reconnaissance, and this is a combination armed recce and dive bombing mission, so four aircraft carried bombs which scored near misses on a bridge. Little movement was seen on the roads, they do claim one MET smoker, and location on the exact bridge they bombed is unknown as well, although on the same day, Johnny Johnson was leading 403 squadron, on a similar mission and struck this bridge and we can see bomb craters near misses all around it and in the description from that squadron director it was one direct hit and then several near misses and we can see clear examples of exactly that in this early August photo and I also did have for this location a before photo this was sometime in the middle to late June we can see the area pretty much untouched and then flash forward to early August and artillery and mortar craters pockmarking the entire area and then of course the bomb impacts and just to check out real quick how this looks today we have the same bridge still there and then just upstream for that we have what apparently at some point was a mill and if I go to the street view I'll just pop us right down here on this bridge and we'll have a look around we can see the dam to the right the mill to the left it's really a beautiful place I was doing some more digging that's a little restaurant right up there that if a person was going to visit, would be a nice spot to drop in on. And yeah, this is just such a, a beautiful spot here that had, at one time, a more, much more violent past. So let me close out with the last mission, 2045 to 2205 by 442 Squadron. And this is another armed recce to the same area that they visited early in the day out here to the east. And three flamers and four damaged vehicles claimed. So with the bridges being struck today and then these armed reconnaissance, they're just interdicting the enemy, trying to keep as many reinforcements and as many supplies from coming forward as possible because starting tomorrow, we're going to run into Operation Goodwood and see the British once again try to break out or at least to draw more enemy forces in here to facilitate the breakout by the Americans to the west, depending on whose account of the operation and the plan you want to go with. So that's going to be a very interesting day. I still have some more overhead imagery trying to capture a tank battle that we saw glimpses of earlier in the month. So I'll spend the rest of my time here getting that nailed down and come back tomorrow with a good description of the first phase of the battle and how these squadrons support it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.